Pong, Flash with Air for Android. This is a two paddle Pong. All right. So, frame number one just has the button. Take a look at the code on frame one. Most of it is inside of this tap handler, which occurs when there's a touch tap of the start button. You'll see that this is named start button. And what happens then when that button is tapped is we basically finish the creation of three things, ball, player paddle, and computer paddle, and then we go to and play frame two. I say we finish the creation of those three things because we started that up here. We made ball, player paddle, and comp paddle to be global variables, meaning that they can be accessed anywhere, not just within this function, but outside of it as well, including on frame two. So that's why the variable declarations are up here. Ball will be of type ball. You look over in the library and we'll see what the class ball is. It's that. Player paddle will be a paddle. And so will comp paddle. So they're both based on the same template, based on the same class. So they're made here. The variables are made here but the construction of them is finished within this top handler. So the ball, which is of type ball, finishes its construction down here with ball is assigned new ball, with capital B, meaning this is calling the construction of the ball. That particular instance of that particular class then gets put at x and y of 400 and 240, which is about in the middle, and we add to the stage the ball. Same thing then is done with the player paddle and with the comp paddle. Player paddle put over on the left, or I guess on the right, sorry, way over on the right, and the comp paddle is put over on the left. The other variables that are made globally, which will be able to be used anywhere, are these four sounds. We're calling them sounds up there, but that's not what makes them sounds. What makes them sounds is that over here, if we look at the classes, they are indeed sounds. We have imported these MP3s and um, given them a class name, if I just look at the options here of one of them, look at the properties, that the actual file that I imported was originally called boohoo.mp3, but you'll recall that in order to work with this in the code, we needed to get rid of the .mp3. It wasn't the mp3 necessarily that the program didn't like, it was the dot that it didn't like. So we could have called it if we wanted boohoo mp3 like this, that would have been fine, but it didn't like the dot. But anyway, we just took away the .mp3 completely, and the class names you see over here are, for me, boohoo, hooray, pong sound, wall sound. So, those classes were made a new instance of and given to these variables. So for example, the P variable is of type Pong sound, not a type Boolean or Ant or Paddle or anything else. Rather, P is a variable of type Pong sound, which right here, we go ahead and finish off the construction of it, is a new Pong sound. So that P at this point, W and H and the B are ready to be used. But for sounds, we also need a sound channel. And we've made an instance of a sound channel here called channel. To frame two, then we go after that button is clicked. As most games for Android or for iOS, it's mainly a bunch of things that are done a bunch of times per second. This is done with a default rate of 24 frames per second, so 24 times per second we will enter a new frame. And when we do, this particular function called FL Enter Frame Handler will be called. So 24 times per second then, the four calls within it will be made. Move ball will be called 24 times a second, bounce off player will be called 24 times per second, and the other two as well. In terms of 
extra variables to work with globally, we've got two, dx and dy. We've chosen the letter D, stands for delta. Delta is often what is used in mathematics for the change in a certain value. So our dx, which is an int, is going to be 5 to begin with, and our dy, also an int, will be minus 5. What we intend for these to be, then, is the change in the x of the ball and the change in the y of the ball. Because we're going to want the ball to move, so I want it to move this way, for example, which means if you look up here, that the x is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you look over here, as I move up to the upper right-hand corner, the y gets lesser and lesser and lesser. So those are our initial values. So let's look at move ball to begin with. Move ball ended up being a little bit more complex than maybe it needed to be. We could have maybe separated out some of this stuff for the game being over or some other place, but whatever, we'll just take it one line at a time. The two core lines then are these two. Basically, the ball's x will go up by whatever the dx value is. You'll recall it's 5. And the ball's y will go up by whatever dy is. You'll recall it starts off at minus 5. So it will indeed go plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 for x, and minus 5, minus 5, minus 5, as it goes up to the upper right-hand corner. But the next part of the code is what happens when the ball goes less than a y of 0. And if the ball, I'll put it over here, Here's our 0 for y. If our ball goes less than 0, right there on the center of it is less than 0, we want it to bounce. So what we want is either the x to change or the y to change. I'll take a look. Here it is. If I keep on going, does the change in x change? No. It still keeps on going less along the x-axis. What changes is the y. The y, which was going minus each time, then goes plus each time. That's what happens if the ball, if its y goes less than 0, we change the dy to be the opposite. And that will work for the bottom as well, because if the ball is down here, change in y, change in y is more and more and more and more, more. Here we want the change in y to be the opposite, to be less, 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 less. So whatever its dy is when it gets to here, it will be the opposite by multiplying it by minus 1. And the next thing is if the ball goes over the right hand side, if the ball goes greater than x of 800, which is here, what do we want? Well, that means that the player has missed it, and so they will have lost a life. And the other thing done immediately is the ball is put back to its original position. If you look back here, those were the two numbers that we used to put it in the middle, so we'll put it back to the middle. And we'll also give it its, its original dx and dy values, although you'll notice here that I bumped them up a little bit by one pixel each time just to make it a little bit more challenging once you've lost a life. We have a variable lives that it goes down by one. I've initialized it here. It started at three. So sure enough, if the ball goes off to the right, they will have lost a life. And so internally, we're keeping track of the lives with the lives variable. And there it goes down by one. Lives minus minus means whatever its value was is reduced by one. Start at three, goes to two. Down at two, goes to one, and so on. We will also want our lives to be displayed on the stage. Our stage has an object or a place called lives on stage. So it's up here at the top. The name of this, if you look at it in the properties, actually this one, is lives on stage. This lives is just a static string that will not change, whereas this one is one which is editable. And again, then it's called lives on stage. And it starts displaying three. But every time the ball goes off over the right, the lives go down, and we want the text of the lives on stage objects to reflect that. So it becomes the lives variable. Plus we have to add this. Lives is an int. But we want the 
text of lies on stage to be that number. So we need to convert an int into text. And the easiest way to do that is to add an int, which lives is, to an empty string. Since a string is a larger data type than an int, the result becomes the larger of the two data types, which is the string, which is text. So that will make sure that the number is text, which can be displayed on the lives on stage text box. The other thing that we're doing here is we're saying if our lives ever gets down to zero, equals equals means checking for equality between two operands. If lives become zero, which it will after missing the ball three times, we want to do a couple things. First of all, we want to go to and play four. We want to go to and play a frame which has our sad face or our you lose on it. And we also want to remove the computer paddle, the player paddle, and the ball because we just don't need them anymore and we don't want them to continue to bounce around and be there. So anything that has been added, as was over here, the ball, and the player paddle, and the computer paddle, can also be removed with remove child. And so at this point, we go to and play four. We look at four, frame four. It is our, it's not frame four, that's frame three. Frame four is right there. You lose. And of course, that will have a stop at the top of it. So that's a lot of code that, again, probably could have been in another method. But none of this code is going to execute unless the ball goes greater than 800. So getting back to the three or four things that can happen with the ball, the ball can either go above y of 0 to the right of x800. And then the other two are less than a y of 0 and greater than an x of, what would that be, about 460. So that's what the rest of the code will say here. That if the ball is y is greater than 800, it's going to be the dy, which changes to bounce it the other way. Oh, and I guess the other thing that's not needed, in fact, is the ball going less than x of 0? Because it never will. Because what we're going to see next is that the paddle of the computer always traces wherever the ball is. So if the ball goes up to here in terms of y, the paddle goes up there. So the computer paddle always hits the ball until the very, very last minute because the ball is moving too fast, in which case you win. So let's look at that. Let's look at the comp paddle movement. Comp paddle movement right here, bounce off comp. It's just making the comp paddle y to be equal to the ball y wherever the ball is. And the other thing that it has to do is have the ball bounce off of it. So we check a hit test between the ball and the comp paddle. If whenever that happens, if whenever, in other words, that is true, then the dx will be the opposite. The dx, in fact, is always going to be a minus, 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 minus when it hits it. Then we multiply it times minus 1 becomes a positive, 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 positive. So that's probably the most straightforward of all of the methods which are called every frame. And the other one which is similar then is bounce off player. We will do a hit test between the ball and the player. And what I'm doing here, a little bit different, I'm changing both the dx and the dy. Because what I've done in this particular instance of Pong is I've made it speed up whenever it hits the player. It speeds up by 30%. Because we're multiplying the x, which has to change by minus value, but not minus 1, but minus 1.3. And to keep it going, in a uh, kind of 45 degree angle, we want the change in y to be the same, so 1.3. So that leaves one thing and one thing only. Of course, we have the, the touch, which just came from our snippets. That's uh, just a little touch event and uh, touch and drag for moving the paddle, our paddle, up and down. 
So the one last thing is when we win. And we win when the ball does indeed manage to make it past the computer paddle. Even though the computer paddle is trying to move to keep up with it, at one point it will not be able to. And so the ball will go less than an x of 0. As when we lose, we want to remove all three of the symbols on the stage. In this case, go to go to and play 3, which will have our we win. The end. And actually, it's not the end, because there's one other thing that I didn't refer to, and that is the sounds playing when certain things happen. I've only done it once. I've done it, yeah, right here. The only sound I have playing right now is when the ball hits the player. And so you see here, what we do is we have to change the channel. The one and only channel that we have is going to be equal to P, which is the sound. That is the pong sound dot play. The two parameters do the following. One gives us the amount of time before it starts, so none. In other words, it's going to start immediately. And this, the number of times it is going to repeat, it's just going to be a bop when it hits it, so just one. And that'll be it. And if we want to add other sounds any other place, we'll just do the same thing. Channel equals whatever sound, dot play, blah, blah, blah. And I think that is it.